Turn your eyes, O God, our shield, and look on the face of your anointed one. One day within your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things, and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, say to the prince of Tyre, Thus says the Lord God, Because you are haughty of heart, you say, A God am I. I occupy a godly throne in the heart of the sea. And yet you are a man and not a God. However, you may think yourself like a God, Oh yes, you are wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that is beyond you. By your wisdom and your intelligence, you have made riches for yourself. You have put gold and silver into your treasuries. By your great wisdom applied to your trading, you have heaped up your riches. Your heart has grown haughty from your riches. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have thought yourself to have the mind of a God, therefore I will bring against you foreigners, the most barbarous of nations. They shall draw their swords against your beauteous wisdom. They shall run them through your splendid apparel. They shall thrust you down to the pit there to die a, bl a bloodied corpse in the heart of the sea. Will you then say, I am a God? When you face your murderers, no, you are a man, not a God, handed over to those who will slay you. You shall die the death of the uncircumcised at the hands of foreigners, for I have spoken says the Lord God. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. It is I who deal death and give life. It is I who deal death and give life. I would have said, I will make an end of them and blot out their name for men's memories had I not feared the insolence of their enemies, feared that these foes would mistakenly boast. It is I who deal death and give life. Our own hand won the victory. The Lord had nothing to do with it, for they are a people devoid of reason, having no understanding. 
It is I who deal death and give life. How could one man rout a thousand, or two men put 10,000 to flight, unless it was because their rock sold them and the Lord delivered them up? It is I who deal death and give life. Close at hand is the day of their disaster, and their doom is rushing upon them. Surely the Lord shall do justice for his people. On his servants he shall have pity. It is I who deal death and give life. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus Christ became poor although he was rich, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, I say to you, it will be hard for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and said, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For men this is impossible, but for God all things are possible. Then Peter said to him in reply, We have given up everything and followed you. What will there be for us? Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, that you who have followed me in the new age, when the Son of Man is seated on his throne of glory, will yourselves sit on twelve tribes, on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has given up houses, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or children, or lands, for the sake of my name, will receive a hundred times more, and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. My friends, we've been reading from um, many of the prophets this summer. Um, one thing you should know about the lectionary for weekdays, it follows a two-year cycle. Um, so it's year 2020, which means um, we are in the second year of the cycle. Uh, the second year corresponds with even years. Uh, the first year of the cycle um, corresponds with odd years, roughly speaking. And the way the cycle works is the gospel is always the same throughout uh, the cycle. Um, so in year one, in year two, we always have the same gospel. And in ordinary time, we have a continuous reading of the gospel. So we have Mark, Matthew, and Luke. And uh, that happens in ordinary time on the weekdays. Uh, the gospel according to St. John is sort of interspersed within the lectionary, both in the um, Sunday lectionary as well as um, throughout the uh, year with various feast days and is particularly reserved for the season of Easter. Um, but during ordinary time, the way that the, the 
the two-year cycle works is that there is a different set of readings and responsorial psalms for year one and a different set of, re set of readings and responsorial psalm for year two regarding the first reading um, for these daily masses. And so we've been reading uh, from the various prophets uh, for these past uh, few months now. And one thing that we find in the prophets, at least the ones we're reading now, is um, what sometimes is called doom and gloom. Um, and certainly the prophets um, can in various times uh, write this way. Not that it's always the case. Uh, when we turn to the prophecies of Isaiah, it's particularly those for Advent, um, those prophecies are out about the coming of the Messiah, um, the, the coming of peace, the lion laying down with the kid, uh, you know, the, the serpent in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in, in the child's den. So all of those uh, things are they're different. So the, 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 the prophecies that we read from, they actually are of, 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 a, of a wide range. But we are reading the book of, from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, which uh, is apocalyptic in nature. Um, and by, the, by using the word apocalyptic, I mean uh, there is a certain sense of, of dread and doom um, and something being revealed um, in the, the book of the prophet Ezekiel. And if the world um, is collapsing around you, um, one might uh, indeed think the end is coming. Um, I mean, there's, I've heard some people uh, refer to the uh, things that are currently happening you know, with the coronavirus, with lots of rioting, uh, as a, a foretaste of the end. Um, well, I don't know. Uh, no one knows when the end actually will be. Um, only the Father in Heaven actually knows that. I do know this, that um, there have been worse times in the history of the world. Um, remember the Spanish flu pandemic from over 100 years ago? How many people died from that? 35 to 65 million, it is estimated. And you had the First World War and the Second World War, the Great Depression. And so um, for those people who say the end is, is, is near, I say, well, things have been a lot worse in the past. We always think that things are always the worst in our own time. And I said, I, I'm going to have to need a little bit more than what's currently happening before I'm willing to go to that place. But in any event, that's not to say any of the things that have happened are good. They are all, all challenging. But uh, in any event, speaking about this book of the prophet Ezekiel and this uh, prince of Tyre, as we hear about, um, Ezekiel was, a, was going to be a priest at the time that Israel was conquered by King Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians. And King Nebuchadnezzar did not stop with the kingdom of Judah um, in his conquering, but he also went on to conquer uh, the neighbors of the kingdom of Judah. Among those neighbors was Tyre. Uh, the kingdom of Tyre was on the coast, um, and uh, uh, so uh, kind of uh, where, where modern-day Lebanon is, where Beirut um, is as well. Um, and Ezekiel, the prophet, in the same way that the people of uh, Israel received saw that they saw a certain judgment against them not being faithful to the covenant, um, all the other nations, Ezekiel prophesies that they too are receiving judgment in the time of Nebuchadnezzar. But there is always in the apocalyptic literature something more than just the historical aspect of things. There's something that points to a future time uh, as well as a past time. And that, and that is very interesting when it comes to this book of the prophet Ezekiel. Many people have asked, well, who is this prince of Tyre? And depending upon who you ask, um, they will tell you it either represents um, the evil one, Satan, uh, or it represents a human being. Now, as to those who believe that there is a sort of representation of, of the evil one or Satan, um, they make this argument. Uh, they talk about how sometimes the prophets and the literature of the, of the scriptures refer to the kings of Israel as princes and not as kings, um, in, and even though they were considered to be kings. And they say that one of the reasons this is so is because the true king of Israel is God. Um, and so uh, in referring to David and Solomon and the other 
uh, successors of those two kings as princes, um, what they're saying is that God is reserving the title of king for himself. All right, so there's the contrast that they follow when with uh, this prince of Tyre. The prince of Tyre being the human ruler, but then the king of Tyre, which is then also mentioned, uh, referring to uh, Lucifer, the evil one. And the reason why they make that argument uh, is they point out how in the book of the prophet Ezekiel, there's this reference to the Garden of Eden and, uh, and how um, the king of Tyre um, had once been uh, a cherub. Um, but as you heard about this prince of Tyre, what is he being judged for? That's really the question. And uh, the question that we heard, or the, the answer about what he was being judged for, is because he who was, from the point of view of the book of, of that we heard today, he who was a man thought himself to be a god. He who was wise um, thought himself to be all wise. He who had riches thought that those riches came due to his own uh, glory. So the idea here is um, the prince of Tyre, who represents the evil one, is showing us this sin of pride um, as being the root of all sin. Because when one confuses who they are in relationship to God, then all kinds of mischief and trouble will happen. So if one, um, out of pride, um, begins to claim for himself um, the right to be like God, um, then, of course, trouble will ensue. Because there is only one God, and no human being, no angelic being, no created being, is like to God. That is the very point of the archangel Saint Michael. Remember what the name Michael means. Uh, the name Michael means who is like God. Um, and so uh, the prince of the archangels uh, leads the counter assault against the fallen angels, driving them from heaven. And the battle cry is, who is like God? You are not God. You are not um, as beautiful as you are. You are not God. Um, you are a created being just as we are. Only God is eternal. So as we um, hear things like this book of the prophet Ezekiel, it gives us a sense of, of what Scripture is, is, is uh, and interpreting Scripture is really all about. Because I mentioned sort of a spiritual uh, dimension, uh, an allegorical uh, interpretation of this prince of Tyre, king of Tyre, the prince being the human, the king being uh, referring to the Satan and the evil one. But there are other ways that we can interpret the book of Ezekiel. We can do it in a much more historical, uh, critical way uh, and sort of going to the literal sense. And so for those who would give that interpretation, they say that this prince of Tyre mentioned was actually a man named Ithbaal III, uh, who would have been reigning in the city and kingdom of Tyre about the time of King Nebuchadnezzar conquering uh, the kingdom of Judah. But regardless of whether the literal um, historical dimension is followed or a different path is followed in interpreting the scriptures, one of the messages that to us is, is very plain, um, and that would be summed up best by again the name Michael, who is like God. We who are creatures, when we acknowledge who we are in relationship to our Creator, it urges us to give thanks to God for all of His gifts. And like the rich man, um, when Jesus says, one who is going to be very hard for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven, more like pass, a camel passing through the eye of the needle, if we ask ourselves, why is that? Because those who deem themselves rich often forget the giver of all of those gifts and begin to attribute their riches to themselves. And so pride and vanity uh, lead them away from the covenant with God. So that is the one message probably that unites everything in these readings today is to not allow pride or vanity um, to lead us to place God to the side and put ourselves in the place of God. Um, that is the real lesson for us today. And the good news that we heard is that 
Salvation is made possible by the one who stripped himself of his divinity and entered into this world. And that was, of course, the Lord Jesus, the incarnate word entering into the world. He who was uh, divine and certainly um, and glorious in, in, as a second person of the Blessed Trinity, willfully chose to empty himself so that those who are here might be saved. There's an old saying from the early church fathers that God became man so that men could become gods. Now, what do they mean by that? The problem with um, the prophet Ezekiel and his mentioning of the prince of Tyre making himself to be a god is the ma method, right? When the prince of Tyre made himself to be a god, it wasn't by participation with the Lord. It was by his own vanity and pride. When we become like God, it is through participation and imitation of the Lord Jesus, the incarnate word. And he is what, and so our participation as members of his body is what is, makes us like God. And there is a great difference when it is by participation or when we claim it in our own right. Um, so my friends, uh, hearing all these things, let us uh, uh, be mindful of the scriptures. Let us be humble. Remember that our salvation depends upon the Lord Jesus who gave everything for us. And let us never forget the giver of all of these gifts as we strive to be more like him, to be more like the Son of God. For now, by God's holy word, let us turn to him in faithful prayer. For our holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop Hebda, and all who guide the church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, especially in the Middle East, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to abortion and for the respect of each and every human life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of our city's police officers and firefighters, may the Lord grant them safety as they protect our communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are seeking employment, that they may have their needs met, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the homebound, the lonely, and those recovering from illness or surgery, may they know the healing presence of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For John Headland, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the petitions of your church be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, so that we may receive from your mercy what we cannot ask out of confidence in our own merits. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will, and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May this mingling of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who we'll receive it. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but to your loving mercy be for me, protection of mind and body, and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 
Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. Body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. the Lord there is mercy, in him is plentiful redemption.
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Before the Mass is ended.